time of Stephen Kai doing a uh, presentation on troubleshooting variable speed drives. A lot of uh, slides here. So I'm going to be doing a um, pretty quick whistle top, whistle stop um, shoot through the slides. So you've got all the slides available. I don't want to suck up too much of your time. But basically, troubleshooting and um, variable speed drives. And obviously, thanks to Malcolm Barnes, who put all the materials together, he's very much a consummate professional electrical engineer with enormous experience in um, drives and the kind of guy you want on site when you've got um, problems, very good at troubleshooting. So briefly, um, quick run through troubleshooting, but before we do the troubleshooting, we just need to look at some of the basic rules for variable speed drives or adjustable speed drives, as some of the um, Americans call them. So obviously, you supply the standalone units, so you've got various IP ratings. Requirements of safety need to be carefully followed. Um, such as the wiring rules, whether it's the Australian wiring rules or the NEC code, National Electrical Code in the States, or the wiring rules in the UK. Um, these obviously need to be followed. And then the other important point is that um, AC converters have large capacitors, so you've got a potential problem with um, discharge of capacitors, so just be wary of those sort of issues. As this area is treat again, you can't just plug a variable speed drive into a hazardous area needs to be in improved enclosures. Those are all important issues. Environmental requirements. Um, obviously, um, the squirrel cage mode is pretty reliable and um, it's protected for poor environmental conditions or in dusty and wet environments. Uh, but the actual converter itself is um, very sensitive to dust, corrosive gas, liquids, lots of atmospheric moisture, so you're going to be a little bit more wary about it than the actual drive itself. Environmental requirements, ambient temperature, less than or equal to 40 degrees, less than 1,000 meters, and relative humidity less than 95%. So these are all very important issues with um, uh, your design of um, variable speed drives. So you need to do temperature to rating, for example, if you go into higher than 40 degrees, and obviously provide additional cooling. So there's typical derating percentage of converted current as your temperature goes up to 55 degrees, you drop it by 50%. Um, so obviously very important. If you don't do that, you get into the problems. The same thing with high altitudes, cooling is less effective. So if you go um, at a higher altitude, you need to obviously reduce the um, the uh, rated current, so you can go all the way down to this looks like 82% at 4,000 meters, which is pretty high. I don't think it's going to be up there. Uh, power supply cables use accepted practice and Australian standards, as discussed there. Safety earthing is really important. What are the wiring rules? Here's an example of the main cable connections power supply, three quarters earth, or ground as the Americans call it. Neutral not required. Motor cables three core plus earth, neutral not required. Control cables must be shielded because there's a ferocious amount of harmonics due to the particular square wave pulse or modulated output. So power supply cables, uh, make sure you um, the actual millimeter squared are suitable for the current rating. It's dependent. Um, length, short circuit current, continuous rating, circuit cable tables, 10% rating, D rating for harmonic heating and stream components. And just remember that electrical magnetic currents can be radiated from your power cables. Um, so just bear in mind how you buy ratings. Control cables, uh, at least 0.5 mm squared for volt drop performance. Uh, shield at one end only, so to the PLC earth, and uh, control cables perfectly with a magnetic shield as well. So steel conduit. A couple of ca common cabling errors. Um, make sure your instrument cables are under a separate duct. Your clients often not happy with that because of the extra cost. Or if you are going to run in the same duct and you're using 
control cables, data communication cables go for five optics, five optic cables. Um, is a big problem with copper with the running voltages and currents. Um, start stop of drives is a whole debate there. Uh, you can wire it to start stop with a controller control circuit, which is generally a preferred approach, or you can break the power set on means of supply side contact and start up on power. This method is options there with contactors. Uh, try to use the word uh, mounting metal enclosures. Efficiency of modern AC converters is extremely high, 97%. So most of your heat generators and the commutation losses is not much uh, loss at the in the actual circuit cards themselves. Our resistance, semiconductor stuff there. Uh, two alternative methods of mounting, surface mounting or recess mounting. So mounting in metal enclosures, uh, make sure they're large enough to dissipate heat. Natural ventilation, enclosure can be smaller, additional ventilation required. There you go. Bottom and top, the chimney effect. Natural ventilation, force ventilation through a filter. And out. Biggest challenge here, of course, filters. Uh, if you've got a, an iron ore plant, something with an enormous amount of um, iron ore dust, for example, filters get clogged up, so there's maintenance issues that you should be aware of. So, a major problem with ventilation to cubicles, difficult to achieve a high IP rating. Manual control wiring, uh, local control by means push buttons, remote control, push buttons, switches, close to the process. Manual control. PLC control wiring is obviously a key part and something which is not really emphasized much here, but you'll probably be using a standard such as Propybus DP or device net or maybe even to very adventurous Ethernet plus TC IP for your control for the PLC. Um, which has grown considerably wide. So this here, uh, this interface here would probably be a Propybus Pre-commissioning, some of the issues of pre-commissioning, make sure your motors and drives are correctly installed, correct settings, pre-commissioning checks also are power motor cables are correct, size and termination, shields are correctly added to the power earth terminal, no faults in the cable, prior to energization, use a mega, but obviously watch out for the mega, do not mega the converter because you destroy delicate electronics. A few other things here to check. If you don't do those, you have potential problems. When you're commissioning, uh, ready for energization, disconnect the motor cables so you don't have unexpected motor starts, a bit embarrassing. And check all the electrical parameters, voltages, EC bus, voltage, microprocessor, circuit losses is ready, and make sure the cooling fan is running in the right direction. Not testing the motor that it's running in the right direction as well. We all know what happens when your pump is set up running in the wrong direction. Basic setting parameters, uh, parameters are see correctly set, base voltage, base frequency, motor details, uh, required, and here's some of the other parameters, speed, maximum, uh, deceleration time, acceleration time, these are all going to be set up properly. So that's, uh, in a nutshell, a few little suggestions there for your next variable speed drive project, troubleshooting, or insulation, commissioning, pre-commissioning, commissioning, and troubleshooting. So if you follow the steps required or requested in the um, installation, you should have no problems. And you'll be doing minimal need for troubleshooting. Thank you very much. This is Steve McKay signing off from Engineering Institute of Technology. Um, thank you for tuning in.